about you know all of the diligence I know and I speak to the entire city of Columbia on this uh, this is tough you know you wouldn't think staying home would be that hard but psychologically physically we all just want to keep doing what we've been doing um, I want to thank everybody that has been listening and taking uh, serious warning and heed of what's going on this this isn't taken lightly and here at the city we're not taking it lightly a lot of it is you know just common sense wash your hands keep your social distance of six feet and uh, you know be you know vigilant on how you feel and how you're feeling and and make sure you stay in contact with uh, the medical professional should you start feeling ill so that's all I have any uh, you know Alderman Departments, directors. All right. Consent agenda, Wes. We have four items on the consent agenda tonight. Uh, the first one is a motion to approve the minutes of the March 16, 2020 regular city council meeting. The uh, number two is to motion to approve closed session minutes of the March 16, 2020 regular city council meeting. Item number three is a motion to approve the minutes of the March 27th, 2020 special city council meeting. And item number four is a motion to approve payment of vouchers for the period of March 16th, 2020 through April 2nd, 2020 in the amount of $283,279 and 94 cents. Is there anything on the consent agenda anybody wishes to have removed? If not, entertain a motion to approve by Martin, second by Ogney. Roll call, please. Eversaw? Yes. Ogney? Yes. Nemitz? Yes. Ressler? Yes. Holcamp? Yes. Martins? Yes. Riddle? Yes. Thank you. I'm going a little bit slower on the roll calls just because of the delay. And I was actually impressed. It didn't seem like there was a big delay. Okay. Um, all right, the um, ordinance 3507 approving a side letter of agreement between the city of Columbia and the uh, um, Paternal Order of Police Labor Council. Do we have anything to add on that? I think we pretty much discussed most of it. Just to reiterate, this is a side letter to the current CBA with the uh, FOP that extends the uh, police residency to a 25 mile radius from the uh, police department. Anybody have any concerns, questions with that? If none, entertain a motion to approve as presented by Eversaw, second by Nemitz. Any other questions? Roll call. Eversaw? Yes. Agni? Yes. Nemitz? Yes. Ressler? Yes. Luke? Camp. Yes. Martins? Yes. Riddle? Yes. Thank you. Camp's on now. Yes. Awesome. Yes. Cool. I didn't hear the yes previously. Wonderful. All right. New business uh, discussion of proposed fair housing resolution. Yes, uh, Mayor. Council. Um, this is Scott Dunneke, Director of Community Development. The uh, city was, uh, as you know, awarded recently a $1 million grant of community development block grant funding and a, resol a fair housing. Fair housing resolution was a contractual requirement of us, uh, between us and the state. We, uh, it is a requirement of all CDBG uh, grantees to pass a fair housing resolution, and uh, we did sign an agreement to do so. So before you today is a draft resolution for, uh, for your review and comment. And um, upon receiving your comment, uh, we will go ahead and uh, present this for adoption at the at the uh, next meeting. All right. Does anybody have any questions, comments? It's you know basically just saying that we're not going to discriminate. That everybody has a chance to you know, buy homes, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I don't mean to you know gloss over it. But that's basically what it says. That we'll be fair and and we'll make sure that the people doing business in the city will be fair. Does that sum it up? That sums it up. All righty. So, all right, let's move on to the uh, next issue, the agreement between the city, city school district and athletic association. Yes, uh, 
as you're aware, we do have an agreement with, uh, well, currently it's the Columbia Quarry League, which is now defunct. So um, this agreement is expiring on April 30th. Um, so this is the renewal agreement, which basically removes the Quarry League placing all of their responsibilities with the uh, Columbia Athletic Association. Um, essentially for, I mean, for basically all attempts and purposes, this is the same agreement with the exception of, um, I would point you to, let me find it real quick, the um, section nine on term, whereas it would automatically uh, renew for one year terms unless uh, one party or the other uh, presents a notification to the other party um, within 90 days before the expiration. So that's the only difference between it. It would automatically renew rather than having to be um, uh, redone in five year increments. So uh, there's no question, or I'd be happy to take any questions you might have about it. Yeah. Any questions? Um, I did, my computer's on it, but I do remember uh, the agreement about cutting the grass mm -hmm. every, every Tuesday and sometimes what? I, I mean, yes, we, we're in July and August. There's no reason to cut the grass two times a week for sure. Um, Sometimes not even once a week. I, I mean, is it mandatory that they have to cut it on Tuesday, every Tuesday, Tuesday or as needed or requested? I mean, that, that, that was written uh, in discussion with our uh, park superintendent who said that's his typical practice. Uh, he does cut it once a week. Uh, Tuesdays, weather permitting, and then if it's necessary in the height of the summer when sometimes it does need a second cutting. So he does do it Friday, weather permitting. That's standard that's practice. Section three, maintenance and operations of fields number or letter G. So yeah, it's still in there. Yeah, I, I believe the, the language was softened. It had specifically said we got the mode on a Tuesday and a Friday, mm -hmm. and it got changed to try to get it by Tuesday, and if it needs it, we'll do it another time in the week. Like if they have a tournament or something right. on a weekend, yes. then I could see that. But. Okay. okay. And I would point out to you, Mayor and Council, that uh, this has been uh, uh, approved by the Columbia Athletic Association Board um, and is ready for uh, signature on their end. And um, it has been forwarded to the school district for consideration at uh, their next meeting. Thank you. Yeah, if you have any questions or comments, we'll get with uh, Scott on those. Please. All right, planning commission appointments. Um, yes, as you're aware, we have uh, two uh, plan commission appointments that are whose terms are up and one who just uh, resigned this past month. So we do need three new plan commissioners appointment appointed. And as uh, previously discussed, um, the intent was to have members on cur currently serving on other boards that uh, will kind of go by the wayside when we redo the uh, zoning code and some of the portions, uh, some of the boards would be, uh, because some of the requirements are going to be folded into the zoning code that are not currently in the zoning code. Um, so for your consideration, we have um, um, members of the architectural review board uh, who would uh, who have uh, agreed to serve the um, uh, terms on the plan commission? Um, that would be Hal Hopi, um, Elizabeth Cutter Sanchez, and Will Trowbridge. And if there's no objections, staff will prepare the appointment ordinance for consideration. Anybody have any questions or objections or issues? All right, that one's good. Sounds good. Thank you. Thank you, Chris Centerville. Yeah, on March 24th, we had our bid to furnish materials for the Centerville Road water main replacement project. Uh, the bid tabs should have been in your packet attached. Uh, Emco Utility Supply Company was the, the low, uh, and we are recommending um, a motion to, to go with them to, to su supply the materials for the Centerville Road water main replacement project. And that would be a, a motion to award bid to IMCO Utility Supply Company in the amount of $26,387 if somebody is on the line to do so by Alderman Eversaw, second by Alderman Martins. Any other question, comments? Welcome. 
Wes, roll call. Hey, Wes, you're on mute. I was muted. Eversol? Yes. Agni? No. Nemitz? Yes. Wrestler? Yes. Hook? Old Camp? Yes. Martins? Yes. Riddle? Yes. Thank you. Hey, Mr. Mayor, before you proceed, who else is in the audience from our staff? Um, we have Chief Paul here and Chris Smith. That's it. That's it. Thank you, sir. Sorry about you. All good. Doug, you want to take the uh, budget fee and salary? Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Um, I just wanted to give a quick update on the fiscal year 2021 budget overview. Um, a lot of the resources that we have available are indicating that the COVID-19 is going to impact our tax receipts pretty significantly, um, most notably on the sales tax. Uh, in response to that, one thing that we have done is actually reduce the amount of sales tax in the general fund by 25000 Additionally, uh, staff has been advised that the positions that we are either creating or have vacant uh, will remain so until such time as we have a clear indication as to how the uh, uh, COVID-19 is going to impact the city's overall budget. Uh, so what we are hoping is that uh, you know, we'd certainly be available to answer any questions the council has uh, this evening with regards to the uh, budget as presented. Uh, however, we would like to proceed with making it available for public inspection and then conduct the required hearing and adopt uh, the budget uh, for fiscal year 2021 at the April 20th uh, council meeting. Uh, the only thing I'd like to add to that, and, and it's mainly for Jay, and I think everybody else has been through enough budgets that even on something like this, when we know there's especially revenue items that you know could be iffy, then we also, and, and I know in the past, department heads and the city administrator have always worked very well together to make sure that there's always those certain items that you need. You'd love to have it, but if need be, it can be put on the back burner. And I know that we've always done that in the past, and I know that we'll do that again, you know, during this time. Absolutely. All right. Any other questions, comments on that? I know we've already kind of gone over everything in broad strokes anyway. So, all right. If not, I will move on to the uh, fee schedule then. Um, all fees except the ones that I'm going to specifically cover this evening are remaining status quo. Uh, for both sewer weight rates, excuse me, and water rates, we're looking at a 3% increase. Uh, for sanitary sewer tap fees, we're looking at a 2% increase and water tap fees, 5%. Uh, building permit, the inspection fees will be increasing and that will be an effort to simply cover our costs associated with administering the inspection programs from the staff perspective and the required documentation that goes along with that. Uh, next, looking at the zoning actions, including zoning amendments, uh, special use permit applications, variants, uh, appeal filing fees, uh, CUP or uh, mixed use overlay zoning district, as well as a uh, concept application fees. Uh, we're looking at uh, $50 for the amendment and then uh, 30 for the, uh, the appeal filing fee. Uh, moving down to the floodplain management permit, uh, we're looking at a $20 and a $50 increase on those permits respectively. Uh, electrical inspection fee, we're simply bringing that up $25 to $75 and that will match the other electrical inspections that we require. And then finally, based off of the direction set uh, by the Committee of the Whole and the last fiscal year, uh, we're continuing a 5% increase for all fees associated with the uh, EMS service. All right, any questions on that? I see none. <clears throat> uh, finally, I'll touch on the salary ordinance for uh, employees not covered by a collective bargaining agreement. Um, there are going to be some specifics that I will touch on in closed session, some uh, specific individuals. However, overall, we're looking at a 3% increase for all, all non-union personnel. All right. Any questions, comments there? All right. That is all I have on that uh, item. Anybody have any just overall questions on the budget and everything? I know they've got a great job putting it together like they always do. All righty. Um, so at this point, I'll entertain a motion. Oh. 
Does anybody have anything else for the city council or the good of the council before we go into um, closed session? Uh, before we go into closed session, uh, just to clarify, um, if we're good with posting the budget, um, and obviously the associated uh, notices that are required with that, um, I do not see a need for the Committee of the Whole to convene on the 13th unless uh, anybody has any items they'd like to discuss. All right. Um, I don't see anybody wanting to convene, so I think we're good. Thank you. All right. I just oh, want to make a remark. If, if something comes up, if something comes up, though, what's the a minimum amount of time if we would need explanation? On it's something? actually kind of changed, but I still think we want to do at least what is it? Forty-eight. Forty-eight hours notice, correct? Okay. If there is anything, you know, we would certainly try to. Uh, I uh, have that ready to go uh, no later than Friday. Kim, you had something? I just want to remind you all to wash your hands, do the social distancing. Um, Alderman Ogney has his mask on. I recommend if you go out in public with just to go to the grocery store, even if you're going to pick up in the parking lot to make sure you have your mask, uh, go home, wash your hands, make sure that you sanitize your homes twice a day with a sanitizing wipes because the COVID is getting very bad in our area. Um, just so you all know, we've had our first positive case and two PUIs at one of our residential areas um, at the garden place. So again, the numbers in our community are ramping up. So please protect yourself. All right, thank you. Anything else for the good of the council before executive session? Sorry, buddy, Jane. Okay. All right, so we're going to executive session under 5 ILCS 122C1 appointment, employment, compensation, performance, or dismissal of specific employees of the public body and 5 ILCS 122C5 purchase or lease of real property for the use of the public body if somebody be so inclined to make that motion. Motion by Neiman, second by Agni. Roll call. Eversall? Yes. Ogney? Yes. Nemitz? Yes. Ressler? Yes. Luke? Ocamp? Yes. Martins? Yes. Riddle. Yes. And for those that are about to be closed off, if you do want to you know, make yourself available when we get finished with the executive session before the announcements and adjournment, we will make sure that everybody that wants to belong back on or is sitting in the waiting room will be brought back on. Correct, Jane? Yes. Does anybody have any announcements? Alderman Nemitz? Yeah, I just have a question, and, and I could ask uh, the city engineer this separately later on, but I, I know that things are established already for part of the budget, but I don't know if there has been any consideration at all of adding a Johnny on the spot to the Meadow Ridge Park for better usage with the disc golf course. And the, I know there's going to be some improvements to the playground area for drainage, et cetera. And I just wondered if that's been considered, and I have no idea what costs that would be during the during the the active months, maybe April through October or something. Mm -hmm. But if if we could add that in there or consider yeah. that, because it's at least look into it. Yeah, I mean we're we've it's got not, the money coming in from the gaming, not that it's coming in right, right now, now. But once things get back to normal or whatever the new normal is, we'll have the money from gaming. And so I, I think there's definitely possibilities for the revenue, and that would help. Use plus to give the kids something to mess with. Well, it would just be a better utilization of the park for the disc golf, for, for picnicking, for the for the playground. Yeah. And they are redoing the or the is the crush line already down. We redo the trail, but it's down there, ready to it's be put on. So I mean, if we want to really get utilization out of something that we're 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 funding, we might as well Perfect. get the facility. Yeah. That makes sense. Thank Any you. Other I appreciate that. The only announcement I want to say is obviously, like Kim said, keep washing your hands, keep the social distancing. Um, if you know of anybody that's at risk, anybody that's elderly, anybody that's just afraid to go outside, there's, you know, some people are just like, you know, being smart and they're observing everything, but they have no problem going to the store, no problem going to the hardware store, et cetera, to take care of needs. But there's a lot of people that this is truly either 
for medical reasons or for personal reasons, it's scaring the heck out of them. And, and they're becoming a recluse in their own homes. But they still need food. They still need items, etc. I know that we have set up here at the city that if you know somebody that needs food delivered, you know somebody that needs um, to get supplies, they just need something to call the police station. And it's 618-281-5151. You'll leave your name, what you need. Somebody will get back to you. I've also spoke to quite a few of the ministers throughout town. And the churches are doing a very similar service to not only their members, but the entire community. So if you know somebody, if you know groups of somebody's that maybe they're too afraid to ask, whatever, reach out. We have people that are wanting to help, especially those type of people. And the people that will be helping will be trained to understand the distancing, the sterilization, the how to handle their stuff without possible contamination and things of this nature. So I just, as an announcement, I want to make sure that everybody is aware that this service is available and it's provided for free through the city and through the other civic organizations and churches. So that's the only announcement I have. Anybody else? Motion I, do have, I do have a question. Oh, yes. Um, this is a question I've had asked me about masks. I know that the change has been to start wearing masks when you go out to public for either you're preventing somebody else to get a disease or you're getting one. I was maybe asking Wes, where would somebody be able to get these masks? People are saying, I can't find them. Do we can't, have your best, you, you really can't. Your best bet is to make yourself some. So if you go up to the CDC website, they got instructions on how to make a simple cloth mask. Okay. It, it's almost impossible. I mean, hospitals can't find them. So I doubt if. And the last, the last conversation we were on with, um, I believe it was Congressman Boss, they were we're actually stating that they don't want citizens running out and buying masks. Make your own, you know, like they said, there's all kinds of, you know, instructions on how to do it because they want those masks to be available for emergency response. Well, I do know there's types of masks, for example, that you use for, for sawing or sanding, and they would do the same kind of job as a homemade yeah, mask. Totally. I just didn't know if we had any options. Yes. Um, you, I, 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 would, I would say go to a Home Depot or Lowe's and, and online and see if they've got them, but Okay. They're all out. Most, most of them have been depleted because people bought those weeks ago. Okay. Just asking the question for a couple of you know, people that asked me the question. No, I know there, I, I know there's a lot of people that are making the cloth ones just to help. It's, it's, I mean, for, for months they said, don't wear them. And now all of a sudden, boom, Correct. wear them. And by now the supply has been depleted. So. Yeah. All right. Uh, okay. Thank you. Anybody else? All righty. Thank you all. Adjourn. Need a motion and a second in the roll call, please. Name and I need roll call. Eversaw, Agni, Nemitz, Russler, Proof, yes. Oak Camp, Martins. Yes. Yeah. yes. Thank you. Well, <laughs> are we off? Yeah.